are gods, we are kings We march in faith cause we believe we can Change the world to what it needs Stand against our enemies cause we can We are kings demanding change Cause we believe we can Why do you think dress code is important? We're gonna go this way Difference between genders, that's a good one What about you? Huh? To preserve your bodies for your husband. That's, these are all good and right answers. Why is dress code important? And I'm gonna come to you for a reason. Because we harping on the women's clothing, right? Because that directly affects you. You understand? And then the brother was bringing out sagging pants and all that other stuff. That affects you as well. You're the young man. You're the man of God that's supposed to be ruling our people. Right. To learn how to lead this nation here. So why is dress code important? Give me Jeremiah 17 and 4. Why is dress code important? to avoid lust, right. You gotta, what our people need to understand is that our enemies have painted a picture of a dress code and said that this is right for our people, our women wearing tight clothes, showing their body, over-sexualizing our people, right? Yeah. But this brother here, when he sees the women now, what are they doing? He's lusting after you. Yeah. All he wants you for is sex. That's and it. all our women want to do now, they, they wear their tight pants, they get in the mirror, they want to look sexy. It's serious, because that's part of the reason why our communities is all jacked up the way it is now. Right. That's why we have single parent households. Bring that's why we have the highest STD rate. You understand that? That's why. And it starts with our dress. we we'll read that. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 4. And thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from thine heritage. Most High God said you're going to discontinue from your heritage. What is your heritage that the so-called black, Hispanics, and Native Americans have discontinued from? Your own. What's that heritage? Sis on your cell phone. Don't get distracted now. What is your heritage that you've been discontinued from? Give me heritage in Sarah. We don't know, right? The officer brought out that he was going to put a yoke of iron upon our neck until we have been destroyed. Destroyed from the knowledge of who we are, how we're supposed to conduct ourselves in this current day according to God. Right. We're destroyed now. We're walking zombies. The Walking Dead. Y'all heard of that show? That show was about you so-called black, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Yeah. Our women walk around thinking they can date and have sex with any man they want and do all these type of things. That's not your heritage. Right. Your heritage is not to show your body off to every Tom, Dick, and Harry that walks around. Right. And your heritage is not to lust after these women. Right. Right. You understand that? Read it again. The book of Sirach, chapter 17, verse 11. Besides this, he gave them knowledge and the law of life born heritage. The law of life born heritage. It's time for our people to come back to their heritage. Right. Their true nationality so that you can be that princess that walks the earth. That's right. So that your enemies don't look at you as they look at Nicki Minaj. Right. right. As they look at Cardi B. And as they look at all the other overly sexualized women that we have out there as the example for your sisters. You know. You understand that? Let me ask you a question. How many of you want to get married? You want a husband? What about you? You want a husband? You want a husband? You want a husband? You want a wife, right? Let me ask you, how many of y'all actually came up in an environment where there was a husband and a wife in the household? Get not, up. not mommy and daddy. Husband and wife. You? What about you? 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 No, right? What about you? What you understand is that y'all are based actually the minority 
of the way our people have grown up in this society here. Right. You understand that? Because even if you had mommy and daddy in the house, a lot of times they're not even married. Right. right. Or they're being raised by either grandma and grandpa or mommy by yeah. herself. Is that not the state of our community today? Why do you think that is? Lust? Lust? You, sis, you didn't have an answer for the first one. Why is our community, why are the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans being raised in single-parent households? Because the structure of the home has been destroyed. Why? Because our structure of the home comes from this Bible here. Right. Read Jeremiah 17 and 4 again. The structure of our home is coming together. How many times have you seen these rappers come together, these so-called celebrities coming together, trying to figure out a solution for our people? Get out. Get out. How many times have you seen it? David Panner, Oprah Winfrey, Jay-Z, Beyonce, all of them want to know what the issue is in the black community and how do we fix it? Right. How do we fix the, the murdering? How do we fix the black-on-black -black crime? Right. How do we fix the overall sexualization of our women, the drug abuse, right. the hoarder? The single parent households, how do we fix our community? Yeah. And the same thing the sister said, there's no structure. Because we refuse to do keep God's laws, statutes, and commandments. Yes. Yeah. When we see Bible, we run away. Right. When we hear Bible, we run away. I don't want to hear it. We get on our cell phone like, I'm tired of this. I don't want to hear this. Why is he telling? Why is he talking to me like that? You can't judge me. Get out. Oh, the problem is there is no judges on this earth here telling our people how to get right so we can change our communities. Right. right. Read that again. The book of Jeremiah chapter 17 and 4. Get out. And now, even thyself shall discontinue from thy heritage. You so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans, you have discontinued from your heritage, who you are. Right now, we're living the customs of the heathen. It's not our heritage to, to, for our women to be wearing pants. Right. It's just not. It's not natural. How you doing, brother? What's your name? Get out. Great. That I gave thee. That the Most High God gave you. Do you understand that the Most High God created you as the most beautiful people on the planet Earth? Get out. Your hair, what we call it, nappy hair. We call it woolly hair. The hair that our women don't love. The hair that our women don't want to show off so they get some other person's hair on their head. Or some other animal's hair on their head. Or some synthetic thing on their head. Because they don't want to show off the natural beauty that God has placed on you? Right. Read again. That I gave thee, uh -huh. and I will cause thee to serve thy enemies. The reason why we are serving our enemies is because we, our foreparents, did not want to keep God's laws, statutes, and commandments. Right. We did not. Our women wanted to be over the men. They didn't want to humble down and follow a man. Right. They didn't want to listen to their husbands. Our women didn't want to dress modestly. Our men didn't want to stand up and be men. They wanted to sleep with every woman that they saw and not take care of them. Get out. Get out. All these things are in God's laws. And we refuse to do it, so what are we doing now? Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 4. And now even thyself shall discontinue from thy heritage that I gave thee, and I will cause thee to serve thy enemies in a land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in my anger, we shall burn forever. Guess what? The Most High God is mad at the so-called black woman today. He's mad at the so-called black man today. We've kindled a fire in the Most High God's anger. Now get Timothy 2 and 9 now. And let's deal with this modest apparel. Get out. We're going to deal with it because it has to be dealt with. Y'all sisters, all right, for example, when you walk by and you see a brother and he may whistle at you or something like that, or he turns around and looks at you, oh, damn, baby, let me get your number. You like that? You like that kind of attention? You sure about that? Right, what about you, bro? When you see a woman, I mean, we see it all over the campus. You see, like that sister right there, when you see them walking past, and they scantily clad and they got their stuff out, what do you do? I Be honest. I got a girl. Huh? I got a girl, I'll do that. You got a girlfriend? I got a girlfriend. So when you first saw your girlfriend and you saw her walk past, she was dressed modestly? Nah. Wait, let's deal with modest apparel for the sister, bro, man. Oh, go ahead, read. The book of 1 Timothy, chapter 2 and verse 9. In like manner also, that the women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Why does the Most High say women adorn themselves in modest apparel? You don't know? Read. 
and modest apparel with shamefacedness uh -huh. and sobriety. Said with shamefacedness and sobriety. Our women shamefaced today, meaning when they see somebody, a man, they, they actually look down, they humble down to that person. No, our women are not shamefaced. And sobriety, are our women sober today? Or do they get drunk, get crunk, get lit? Exactly, read. With shamefacedness and sobriety, not with boarded hair or gold pearls or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness. Our women have to be of women professing godliness. Why? Because that prevents boredom in our society. Right. Understand? Get Matthew 5 with Christ. Matter of fact, get Isaiah 42 and 21, then we're going to get Matthew 5 because for some reason we think that Jesus Christ came on this earth to do away with God's laws. Right. You ever heard that before? Christ fulfilled the law so we don't have to do it anymore. Bring it out. You heard that before? Watch what they say. Watch what the Old Testament says about Christ to come. Read. The book of Isaiah chapter 42 and verse 21. Bring it out. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. He will magnify the law. He will do what? Magnify the law. He said the most high God. He said Christ the Lord will come and magnify the law. Meaning he's going to give you a clearer understanding of God's laws. It's actually going to be a little bit more strict than you think it is. Right. It's going to be a little bit more strict than you think it is. So wearing modest apparel, it's going to be more to it than that. Right. I get Matthew 5. Don't you? The book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 28. But I say unto you that whosoever look... Read up one verse. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, and verse 27. Yeah. You have heard that it was said of them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. So this is Jesus Christ talking. And he said, you've heard from old time that it says, Thou shalt not commit adultery. Right? And what did they say about the Lord? What was the Lord going to do? He's going to magnify the laws, right? Read. But I say unto you. Jesus Christ said, but I'm telling you now. Read. Whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust. Whosoever does what? Whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her. Looketh upon a woman to lust after. Now you had a brother standing up here now talking about he had a girlfriend. And when he saw her, he liked her for her mind. And he doesn't know what she wears as just her clothes. And they don't sleep together, but they kiss and touch. Get out. The dude was full of nonsense. And you could tell he was lying. He came up here with his headphones smirking. You understand? Boyfriend and girlfriend today means that y'all hooking up. Period. Yeah. There is no other. There is no other meaning. Right. You understand? Well, Christ said, if you look upon a woman to lust after her, what's gonna happen? Whoso looketh upon a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. So guess what? When you see that woman that's not dressed modestly, and you looking at her legs. And you envisioning how she looks naked and, and really getting into it? You've done what? Committed adultery. Committed adultery with her already in his heart. That's why modest apparel is important. Right. Because the laws go deeper than just the actual act. You understand that? And this is Christ talking. So we need you, sister, to be your brother's keeper and dress modestly so that he's not seeing your legs. So that he's not seeing your curves. Why? Because that leads to him lusting after you. It's just a natural reaction, and that's why we have whoredom and all type of lust flowing around our community today. Right. That's why modest apparel is important, because it keeps God's laws on your mind. That's why there's importance in fringes that the brother was bringing out. The fringes make you, remind you that you're an Israelite and that you're supposed to be keeping God's laws. Right.
walking around saying that I'm a black man. I ain't saying that no more. It's our man. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.